Okay, very good. Luke 12. Today we're going to talk about wealth and riches. This subject is relative to the culture that we live in. In an African uh, village, uh, they would consider all of you to be very wealthy. But uh, in some places, uh, all of us would be considered poor. It depends on the culture in which you live. Uh, in Luke's Gospel, there is a theme about wealth and riches. There are several places, several passages that only occur in Luke's Gospel. Uh, the parable of the rich fool in Luke 12 only occurs in Luke's Gospel. In uh, Luke 16, the story of the shrewd manager is only in Luke's Gospel. Uh, the story of the rich man and Lazarus is only in Luke's Gospel. Uh, that's in chapter 16 as well. In Luke 19, the story of Zacchaeus is only in Luke's Gospel. And in Luke 21, the story of the widow's offering, the widow's might, is only in Luke's Gospel. So all of these passages and some others represent a theme about how you handle riches or wealth. And this theme also continues in Acts. Uh, when it talks about the willingness of the early Christians to share their possessions with those that had need. Uh, when Barnabas sold his field and laid the money at the apostles' feet. Uh, the story of Ananias and Sapphira and how they lied about their money. Uh, all of these are part of this same theme in Luke and Acts. Alright, back to Luke chapter 12. Uh, this story begins with brothers who are fighting over money. They are fighting over an inheritance. Uh, this is Luke 12, verse 13. Uh, money is one of the biggest things that families fight over. Uh, marriage, uh, one of the biggest uh, problems in marriages is disagreements over money. 
Одна из самых больших проблем в семье, в браке, это несогласие по поводу денег. In our country, the two biggest, uh, the three biggest things that uh, married people fight over. В нашей стране одна из трех главных причин, почему люди ссорятся. Money, sex, and in-laws. Это деньги, секс и как бы тесть, тёщ. Their extended families is what I mean by the in-laws. Their their father-in-laws, mother-in-laws. И ну это значит семья семьи мужа и жены. So Jesus replies to these brothers that are fighting. И вот Иисус отвечает тем братьям, которые спорят. Who made me a judge or an arbitrator between you? But they should have been able to work out the details of their inheritance. But then in verse 15, he gives a principle to them. He says, be careful and guard yourself against all kinds of greed or covetousness. Рядом сказал им, смотрите, берегитесь любостяжания, ибо жизнь человека не зависит от изобилия. He says a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Ибо жизнь человека не зависит от изобилия его имения. Now, um, people tend to emphasize how much they possess. Люди склонны делать ударение на то, чем они владеют. And many people use this as a status symbol. И многие люди используют это как символ своего статуса. If they can wear better clothes, if they can drive a car, if they can live in a better house. Если они могут носить одежду получше, машину, иметь машину или жить в доме получше. Then they feel that they are better than other people. Тогда они чувствуют себя лучше, чем другие люди. There is a tendency to be selfish with one's possessions. Есть такая тенденция, что человек очень эгоистично относится к своему имению. There is a tendency to be greedy about hoarding one's possessions. Есть такая тенденция также быть жадным и собирать, накапливать свои имущества. So Jesus warns about this attitude. Иисус предупреждает против такого отношения. It is not wrong to have possessions. Нет ничего плохого в том, чтобы иметь что-то. It is wrong to be selfish with those possessions. Но неправильно, если мы эгоистично относимся к нашим имениям. If you go back to Luke chapter three. This is where John the Baptizer is telling people what they need to repent. Look at verse 11. Let's have someone read that, please. All right, so even people who have very few possessions are not supposed to be selfish with them. Sometimes we think that only the rich are supposed to be generous, but that's not true. Uh, go back to Luke 12. In verse 16, this rich man uh, produced a very good crop. He obviously owned some land. 
And he was doing well with his, with his farming. He produced so many crops that he did not have room to store them, uh, the harvest. Verse 17. So he had more than he could keep or use. This overabundance of possessions presented him with a decision. In verse 17, he asked the question, what shall I do? See, he had an excess, so what am I going to do with the excess? Without even thinking about anyone else, he said he would tear down his present barns and build bigger barns. And there he could store all of his uh, excess crops. And look at what he said to himself in verse 19. Let's have another student read that. Много добра лежит у тебя на многие годы. Покойся, ешь, пей, веселись. So he, he thought only of himself. То есть он думал только о себе. Uh, he was only thinking of his own ease and luxury. Он, uh, он думал только о, своей, uh, о том, чтобы его жизнь была легкой и uh, наполнена богатством. He never thought of anyone else's needs. Uh, point of this story is not that possessions are evil. But that selfishness is evil. Um, in our country today, uh, there is a disagreement between our president and the people. Um, our president believes that possessions should be equalized in society. He believes that Money and possessions should be taken away from the wealthy. Forcibly so. And distributed to uh, people less wealthy. Even to people who are not willing to work. Um, he does not uh, allow people uh, the free choice to give as they choose to others. But would force this on people. Но uh, он силой uh, желает принудить uh, людей делать это. Uh, Jesus asked people to be unselfish. Иисус просил людей быть неэгоистичными. And told them that they would be judged by God if they were selfish. И сказал им, что их будет судить Бог, если они будут эгоистичны. He told the man who had two coats to share with somebody who didn't have a coat. Он сказал человеку, у которого есть две одежды, чтобы поделился с тем, у кого не было вообще одежды. But he didn't uh, send people to break into your house and steal your coat and give it to somebody else. 
Но он не посылал людей в чей-то дом для того, чтобы украсть вот эту одежду и кому-то ее отдать. So, in the story of the rich man, и в истории о богатом человеке, у которого было, было эгоистическое отношение, God told him in verse 20 that he was going to die that very night. Then what would happen to all those goods he had stored up for himself? Now go back to verse 13. Remember that Jesus told this story to two brothers who were being greedy about their inheritance. Помните, что Иисус рассказал эту историю двум братьям, которые были проявляли жадность по поводу своего наследства. Verse 21 gives you the point of the story. И вот этот первый стих указывает вам на суть истории. This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. Так бывает с тем, кто собирает сокровища для себя, а не в Бога богатее. So selfishness is the uh, is the sin involved here. И эгоизм это грех, который замешан в этой истории. And it says if he stores up things for himself and is not rich toward God. То есть кто собирает сокровища для себя, а не в Бога богатей. Now keep your uh, keep your uh, hand in Luke and turn to First Timothy six. Давайте здесь закладку поставим и откроем первое Тимофея шестую главу. First Timothy six. Um, we're going to look at uh, verse seventeen and eighteen. Откроем первое Тимофея шестая шестая глава семнадцатый и восемнадцатый стихи. Actually seventeen through nineteen. Let's have a different student read that. In verse 17, do not be arrogant and do not put your hope in wealth. In verse 18, they're to do good and be rich in good deeds and be willing to share. How different this story would have been in Luke 12 if the rich man had taken all of his excess crops and distributed those to people who were in need. does not teach that it's wrong to do well or to have possessions. It teaches that it's wrong to be selfish with those possessions. And to ignore the needs of people around you. Let's turn over to uh, Luke chapter 14. We mentioned this last time in the story of the great banquet. Luke 14 verses uh, 12 
through 14. He's talking to people who have enough wealth that they can provide dinners for other people. In verse 12 he says, don't just invite your friends and rich neighbors who can pay you back. Verse 13, also invite the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind. These are people who can't pay you back. And you're inviting them just to be kind. So again, here's the principle of unselfishness. Alright, now look at uh, chapter 16. This is a story of a manager who managed someone else's possessions. He was not the owner of the possessions, but the manager of the possessions. Um, Explain to me just a moment what the economy is like in the Ukraine. Is it is it a private enterprise economy? So it's it's capitalism in some form, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so we understand the difference between being an owner and being a manager. Yes. Okay. So this man in, in uh, Luke 16 uh, was a manager and he was misusing the possessions of the owner. He had no right to misuse the possessions of the owner because they weren't his possessions. When the owner found out, he was going to um, force this man to give an account and fire him. Let's have a student read verse 2. Alright, remember that none of us is an owner. All of us are managers. God is the owner of all the possessions. We just manage the possessions that he has allowed us to manage. So this manager was in trouble and he didn't know what he was going to do when he lost his job. So he decided he would try to ensure that he had a job after his, man, his master uh, fired him. So he falsified the account books of his manager, of his master. So 
Look at verses uh, 5 through uh, 7, please. Let's read that. И призвал Божников Господина своего каждого порос и сказал первому, сколько ты должен Господину мне? Он сказал, сто мер масла. Сказал, возьми твою расписку и садись скорее, напиши пять десят. Потом другому сказал, а ты сколько должен получать? Сто мер пшеницы. Сказал, возьми твою расписку и напиши восемьдесят. So in effect he cheated his owner out of the money that was owed him. He made the other people happy because now they owed less money. And he made the records reflect that they owed less money. И он э, подделал отчеты так, что э, они отображали, что эти люди теперь э, должны меньше денег. He did this so that when he lost his job, those other people would, would befriend him. И он сделал это потому, чтобы когда он потеряет свою работу, вот эти люди, они оставались с ним в дружеских отношениях. But now those other people knew that he was dishonest, just like his uh, master knew that he was dishonest. Но теперь вот эти люди, они знали, что, э, они так же, как и его хозяин, уже знали, что этот управитель, он является нечестным. Кто будет доверять нечестному человеку? Да, никто не будет доверять э, нечестному человеку. If he will cheat you, he'll cheat somebody else. Если он обманул вас, он обманет и кого-то еще. But sometimes in people's minds who are criminals or dishonest. Но иногда в мыслях людей, которые являются преступниками или нечестными. They look at this as being smart. Они э, смотрят на это и считают, что это умно. This is just the way the world works. И это вот именно так функционирует мир. So, uh, the master uh, told the manager that he'd really been smart in doing that. И хозяин сказал управителю, что uh, он поступил умно. Таким and, and that he hoped those other people would be his friends like he expected them to be. И он сказал, что, надеюсь, вот эти люди, которым ты помог, что они действительно будут твоими друзьями, как ты этого от них ожидаешь. Но стихи с 10 по 12 говорят нам о сути этой истории. Кто-нибудь еще из студентов, прочитайте стихи с 10 по 12. Верный в малом и во многом верен, а неверный в малом не верен и во многом. Итак, если вы в э, неправильном богатстве не, не были верны, кто поверит вам истинно? Если, если в чужом не были верны, кто даст вам ваше? Окей. Okay. So и когда мы посмотрим на 10 стих, If you can't be trusted with a little bit of uh, possessions, who would trust you with more? If God allows you to have management over a few possessions, And you can't be trusted to be fair and honest with those possessions. Why would God trust you with more? And if you are dishonest with worldly wealth, if we are dishonest with worldly wealth, 
Why would God give you true spiritual wealth? And if you can't be trusted with someone else's property, which is really what all of us have, we all have someone else's property. Then why would God give us something of our own in eternity? то uh, как Бог доверит нас, нам uh, свою вечность. Verse 13 стих показывает нам принцип, который управляет всем этим. If money or wealth is our master, then God is not our master. Если деньги или богатство является нашим господином, то Бог тогда не может быть нашим господином. If God is our master, если Бог наш господин, then we are ruled by divine principles and not by greed for money. Uh, sometimes the right thing to do will not make us more money. And Jesus told this to the Pharisees who loved money, verse 14. Turn back to 1 Timothy 6. Let's read... Uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, and we want to start back here with verse uh, 6 and read through 10. 6, 6 through 10. Откроем 1 Тимофея 6 главу и прочитаем стихи 6 по 10. Великое приобретение быть благочестивым и довольным, ибо мы ничего не принесли в мир, явно что... Ничего не можем и вынести из него. Имея пропитание и одежду, будем довольны себе. Желающие обогащаться впадают в искушение в сеть, и в многие безрассудные вредные похоти, которые погружают людей в бедствие и пагубы. Ибо корень всех зол есть евролюбие, которому... ...себя подвергли многим скорбям. It's the love of money that is the root of evil. It's people that are eager for money or greedy for money that wander away from the faith. Uh, turn to Philippians 4. Let's, let's read verse 12. Paul was able to live in both plenty and poverty. Let's have a brand new uh, reader read verse 12. Кто-нибудь еще из студентов, кто не читал, пожалуйста, прочитайте. Умеет жить в скупости, умеет жить в изобилии. Научился всему и во всем. Насыщаться и терпеть голод, быть и в обилии, в недостатке. Alright, so Paul could be content with a lot or a little. То есть, Павел может быть довольным и когда у него много, и когда у него мало. He could find his joy in God and in doing God's will. In plenty and in want. Uh, let's turn back to the Gospel of Luke. We'll look at Luke 16 beginning in verse 19. Мы прочитаем Луки 16 главу, начиная с 19 стиха. 
Now, the first story in Luke 16 is about being dishonest or untrustworthy with riches. Now, let me tell you um, <coughs> some of the ways in which um, people will be dishonest with riches in my country. И позвольте мне сказать вот некоторые способы, как люди могут быть нечестными по отношению с богатством в моей стране. Every year uh, the government requires us to pay federal income tax. Каждый год государство требует от нас, чтобы мы платили налог на прибыль. If we make money, we owe a certain percentage of that money to the government. Если мы зарабатываем деньги, то мы должны but we have to be honest about what we make. Um, some people say, pay me with cash so that I don't have to report what I made as income. So the worker works all day. <coughs> and the boss pays him cash money. And nowhere is it recorded that he paid him any money. So if it's not written down, he can lie about it and say he didn't make that money. And so he owes less money to the government. Um, sometimes people lie about uh, contributions that they make. Because you can deduct those on your taxes. Here's another way that uh, Americans lie about their money. They're trying to sell somebody an automobile. And they lie to the person about how much they paid for the automobile. They say they paid much more for it than they actually did. So then they can ask more for it in the sale. Uh, 
if they are receiving support from different places? They might lie to their supporters about how much support they're receiving. Then they would make their supporters have pity on them and give them more. Because they lied to get more. So all of this applies to preachers as well as it applies to anybody else. We cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God and money. So uh, remember that everything we have is God's and we are just managers of it. Now look at Luke 16, 19. It says there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. This man had plenty. He had more than he needed. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus. This man was not somewhere far away, was out of sight of the rich man. He was right at the rich man's gate. Он лежал прямо у ворот богатого человека. It would be difficult to ignore him. Было тяжело его игнорировать. But that's exactly what the rich man did. Но именно это богач делал. This poor man was longing or desiring to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. И этот нищий, он желал напитаться крошками, падающими со стола богача. But the rich man was too busy feeding his own face to uh, pay attention to the poor man. So he was selfish like the man in Luke 12. And because he was selfish, he went to hell in verse 23. И поскольку он был эгоистом, он uh, оказался в Аде, в 23 стихе. And uh, in, uh, I noticed you changed my word to Hades. Uh, it's Hades in, in Russian. In verse uh, 23. Yes. Okay, you're, you're correct. It is Hades, but does it say... Um, in Hades, he lifted up his eyes in torment. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, let me explain that Hades. Hades is where all dead people go. The good and the bad. But torment is where only the wicked go. So this man went to a bad place. He went to the place called uh, torment. And, and this place is called hell in other parts of the Bible. Gehenna. Notice that he was in the fire in verse 24. 
Да видите, что он был в огне в 24 в пламени в 24 стихе. Now, part of the world of the dead is paradise. А часть мира мертвых является рай. And part of the world of the dead is uh, Gehenna. So, um, Hades covers both of those parts. Now, for, for our purposes today, the reason this rich man was in the flames was because he had been selfish in his life. Причина, почему этот человек был, э, попал в пламя, э, это было потому, что он был эгоистичным при жизни. Uh, in verse 28 not to do like he did. И он хотел предупредить своих братьев в 28 стихе, чтобы они не поступали так, как поступал он. In other words, he wanted to warn them not to be selfish with their wealth like he was. Другими словами, он, он хотел предупредить их, чтобы они э, не, не вели себя эгоистично по отношению к своему имуществу, как он это делал. Like он, чувствовал, он считал, что если кто-то придет, э, восстанет из мертвых и придет к ним, то они покаятся. И что бы это значило, что бы покаяние значило для его братьев? It would be to salvation. Yeah, but what, what would it involve for their behavior? Но как бы это повлияло на их поведение? They would be generous and give, start giving more. Exactly. Да. Okay, so um, he said they won't listen even if somebody is come to them. <laughs> and Jesus did raise from the dead, didn't he? But still the greedy remain greedy and selfish. This story has to be seen as part of this theme about wealth and riches. And its meaning is we cannot be selfish and ignore the people who need our help that are lying at our gate. И смысл ее, суть ее в том, что мы не должны быть э, эгоистами и должны э, обращать наше внимание на э, тех людей, которые окружают нас, лежат буквально у наших ворот. Um, there are many ways that we can be selfish. И есть разные, разные виды, разные способы, которые мы можем проявлять свой эгоизм. And uh, we have to work hard at being generous. И мы должны тяжело трудиться над тем, чтобы оставаться щедрыми. Um, sometimes we are selfish if we loan money to people. Иногда мы поступаем эгоистично, когда одалживаем деньги. Uh, sometimes people are in desperate need. Иногда люди uh, действительно сильно нуждаются. And we loan them money. И мы одалживаем им деньги. Uh, and we really know that they don't have much ability to pay us back. And yet we would put pressure on them to pay us back. Well, it would be better if we just gave them the money. Um, Um, in the Old Testament, it even talks about it's sinful to take advantage of a poor man by charging him interest. Uh, charging interest is not evil in itself. 
But it is evil to take advantage of the poor by Anybody want to ask some questions at this point about some of the things we've covered? Where where is this um, fine line between uh, the poor and the rich? Huh. Uh, that's a very good question. And it, it is all relative to where you live and who has uh, what in your area. In, in Luke 3, the man who has two coats is rich compared to the man who has no coat. He is rich because he has one more coat than what he needs. So all of us are rich by that standard, aren't we? The, the point is not how much wealth we have, but how honest we are and how generous we are with what we have. And do we realize that what we have is not our own, but it belongs to God? And we are trying to please Him by the way we use it. Uh, another great exercise for us in dealing with wealth is our giving to the Lord. И еще uh, хорошее такое упражнение uh, в, uh, в том, как мы распоряжаемся своим имуществом, это uh, то, сколько мы жертвуем uh, Богу. If we practice being generous in our giving to the Lord, it helps our whole attitude toward money. И если мы uh, щедро uh, отдаем Богу, то на, это помогает нам uh, быть, развивать вот именно такое щедрое отношение uh, к деньгам. I believe that we have many people in this country who will be lost eternally because they do not give of their wealth to the Lord. And we have many people who don't make much money who are very generous in their giving to the Lord. It's a matter of their heart. It's a matter of what's important to them. So wealth is always a relative thing. Um, but your question is a great question. We, we never think of ourselves as being rich. We always think of the rich as those who have more than we have. But what if we look through the eyes of the people that have less than we have? А что если бы мы посмотрели на себя глазами тех людей, у кого меньше, чем у нас? Тогда кто был бы богат? So, who would have another question? У кого еще есть вопросы? В Луке 16 главе, 8-9, я запутался, что он благодарит господина управляющего и почему это советует нам? 
Okay. Uh, uh, the question is, uh, we don't understand what uh, uh, what is being praised in the verses uh, eight through nine, and why it's being advised to us. What is the point? Of those verses. Oh, verses eight and nine. Okay. He he is speaking as a worldly owner. He is speaking as somebody who um, uh, is praising uh, craftiness or shrewdness. Sarcastically. 
И здесь э, как бы сарказм. То есть, когда он говорит это ну, как бы не серьезно, а именно сарказм. I know it's very difficult because that's always been my hardest part of this too. Well, uh, they're asking because uh, um, they say it's uh, that here it's Jesus talking, saying, "And I tell you." No, it's it's the it's the master still. Look at verse eight. You see, verse nine follows uh, verse eight. It's the master talking to the uh, unwi uh, dishonest manager. If it's the if it's Jesus, then it's a it's a contradiction. Because clearly verses 10 through 12 is the point of the of the story. And if you compare that point with the point that's made in the other stories, uh, then you see where it's where it's headed. Uh, let me show you another story real quickly that has a similar element in it. Look at uh, chapter 19, verse 8. This is when Zacchaeus was repenting of his sins with money. Look at the second half of what Zacchaeus says. He says, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. So part of Zacchaeus' sins with money was lying and being dishonest about it. And he was going to make that right by paying those people back even more than he owed them. This is the opposite of what the shrewd manager did in uh, chapter 16, verses 5 through 7. I guess what I'm saying is if you look at all of the stories that are on this same theme, you see the same things being emphasized in these different stories. It helps us to interpret this more difficult story in uh, about the shrewd manager. But I'm like you, the, the hardest verses in this story are verses 8 and 9. And the way that I've explained it is the only way I can make sense out of it. Um, okay, uh, they are going back to verse uh, 9 and asking uh, about the last part of the verse. The uh, eternal dwellings. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> I still think that it is 
this sarcasm. And if it is Jesus speaking, which it may be, he's saying, he's saying something like this. Go ahead and try to make friends like this dishonest steward did. And see if you get welcomed into the eternal dwellings. Uh, and of course you wouldn't be welcomed into the eternal dwellings. So if it's Jesus speaking, he's being sarcastic in what he says. He's not being serious. Uh, he's saying, if you want to try this, see how it works for you with God. And he does not use sarcasm at all in verses 10 through 12. So whatever you do with 8 and 9, the point of the story is in 10 through 12. Так что, как бы мы ни рассматривали стихи с 8 по 9, центральная мысль этой истории отображена в стихах с 10 по 12. Good discussion. Who else has a question? Да? Да? А вы все как починали? Багато таких людей. Это на программе? Okay, you, you seem to have many rich people in your church. Do you have any special program to attract the rich, uh, rich people? No. <laughs> no, we have people that have nothing and people that are multimillionaires. They're all mixed together. And uh, some of the wealthy people are generous and some of them are not generous. Uh, it's like anybody else. Um, some of them use their homes to, to uh, uh, serve other people. Uh, some of them uh, support uh, missionaries. Uh, our, our entire congregation uh, works to support the poor. We give away food and clothes and help pay for people's bills. But we could do more if more people were unselfish. Okay, is it a proper to ask a Christian uh, how much he earns or um, what uh, his income and uh, is the Christian obliged to uh, say uh, how much money he makes uh, or he can say that it's not a right. It's, there's nothing in the scripture that says that we have to divulge to other Christians how much we make. Now, if, if we're gaining support from people and trying to raise a certain amount of support, we should be honest with what we are raising to our supporters. Если же мы собираем на что-то деньги или просим поддержки, и 
то нам нужно, тогда нам нужно быть честными в том плане, что мы должны указать, сколько, сколько нам нужно, сколько мы имеем. But now, consider the Old Testament teaching about giving 10% of your income. Ну, взять, к примеру, ветозаветный принцип десятины. Малахи 3, verse 10. Bring the entire tithe into the storehouse. Tithe is 10%. И в Малахи мы читаем о том, что там говорится, что принесите всю десятину в Дом Господень. Um, this was uh, commanded to the Jews. И это была заповедь для евреев. And uh, the Jews didn't have Christ. Uh, we are commanded to give as we've been prospered. Um, and to give generously. But we are not given a percentage. Yet, how could Christians really handle the Bible properly? Но как может христианин правильно относиться к Библии? And conclude that God would want Christians who have the greatest blessings to give less than what He wanted the Jews to give. И при этом считать, что как ну как может Бог, который дал христианам намного большее благословение требовать от них меньше, чем он требовал от евреев. Которые стали христианами в день Пятидесятницы, они, они же не сказали, что ура, теперь мы можем давать меньше. Since we've been saved by Jesus, now we don't have to give as much. I have a very hard time accepting that idea. Uh, I think uh, that the Bible would, would challenge us to discipline ourselves and be unselfish. Я думаю, что Библия бросает нам вызов, чтобы мы себя дисциплинировали и были менее эгоистичными. And as Christian leaders and preachers, we should be examples to the people that we preach to. И как христианские проповедники и лидеры, мы должны быть примером тем людям, которым мы проповедуем. If we trust God with our giving, the people will trust God with theirs. They'll see our example of faith. Если мы доверяем Богу тем, э, показывая это тем, э, сколько мы даем, то э, другие люди также будут э, доверять Богу и э, также давать больше. The scripture says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Писание учит нас, ищите прежде Царствие Божие и, все, э, и праведность Его, а все остальное приложится вам. Somebody else have a question? Еще вопрос. А как у них проходит пожертвование? Люди не стараются показать, сколько они кладут в жертвы, а как-то более ну, как бы, скрывая это, или же это открыто. Okay, uh, what about um, contributions at, um, at your church, for example? Like, is it open where people can see um, how much? Uh, Uh, everybody else is giving, or is it more um, like more? I don't know, secretive. I don't. Yeah, it's the the church can see how much is given in total. And every check that is given is logged into the computer. И каждый чек, который выписан, то есть он вносится в компьютер. And the elders of the church can see what the different members of the church are giving if they're giving a check. И старейшины церкви, они видят, сколько члены церкви дают, и если дают в виде чеков. And so the elders can talk with people if they think they need to talk with them about their giving. 
поэтому старейшины могут поговорить с людьми, которые, ну, по мнению старейшин, нуждаются в том, чтобы с ними поговорить. They can say to that person, we want to encourage you in this because uh, the scriptures challenge us to do this way and we just want to encourage you to, to try the best you can to do better with that. И они могут обратиться к такому человеку, что мы хотели бы ободрить себя в том, что вот Писание указывает на это, что нужно лучше распоряжаться своими финансами. Uh, we don't we don't know what everybody makes. But it's quite obvious that some people spend a whole lot more money than other people do. Now the elders know exactly what we make, the ministers. И старейшины знают э, точно, сколько э, служителей получают. And I remember a time when a good, godly elder sat down and talked with me about my giving. И я помню было время, когда хороший, э, благочестивый старейшина сел и поговорил со мной о том, э, как я должен давать. This man was like a father to me. Этот человек был мне как отцом. He loved me, and I knew it. Он любил меня, и я это знал. And he challenged me to do better at my giving. И он как бы бросил мне вызов, чтобы я больше старался и был более щедрым в своем подаянии. And his talk with me affected me deeply. И его разговор со мной оказал на меня очень сильное влияние. And I worked on that for years to do better and better. And I am grateful to him for it because he helped me to think more like God wanted me to think. I could have resented him for doing that. Я мог бы обидеться на него за то, что он так поступил. But I knew the scriptures well enough to know that he was telling me the truth. Но я достаточно хорошо знал Писание, чтобы понять, что он говорил мне истину. So these things have to be handled carefully by spiritual leaders that have credibility in our eyes. Так что вот эти вопросы, их нужно очень так осторожно решать. И особенно духовными, э, при помощи духовных лидеров, которые имеют э, как бы авторитет в наших глазах. Но, конечно же, мы не можем учить людей делать то, что мы сами не делаем. Um, I think that's, that's very true. Так что я думаю, что это истинно. Anybody else have a question? I guess no. Okay. Uh, we cannot control what other people do. And we are not responsible for what other people do. But we are responsible for what we do. Uh, in uh, Luke 18, in verse 18 and following, we have the story of the rich young ruler. This story is also in the other Gospels. But it has more impact in Luke's gospel. Because of all of these other stories about the rich and how you handle wealth. 
Jesus challenged this particular man to uh, sell his possessions and give to the poor. Иисус как бы бросил вызов этому молодому человеку, сказав, что ему нужно продать имение и раздать его нищим. Now he does not tell every single person to do this. И он не говорил этого каждому человеку, которого он встречал. In the book of Acts, the Christians sold some possessions and gave the proceeds to people that had need. But they did not divest themselves of all their possessions. Но они не обязательно как бы продавали все свое имущество. In Luke 19:8, Zacchaeus gave half of his possessions to the poor. But he still kept half. So the, the, the point seems to be that this young man had a special problem and Jesus was trying to help him get over that problem. Но вот здесь мы видим, что у этого молодого человека, у него была определенная проблема, и Иисус попытался ему помочь с этой проблемой. В двадцать четвертом и двадцать стихе Иисус говорит, что тяжело имеющим богатство войти в царствие Божие. He said it was easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to be saved. Now this is clearly impossible. But God said in verse 27 that it is possible with God. So we can be saved, but we must not be selfish or dishonest. Um, look at chapter 19. Zacchaeus was a tax collector and was wealthy. It's hard for a tax collector uh, to uh, make a good living unless he was dishonest. So Zacchaeus had been dishonest. And he was wealthy. But Jesus came to his house. And Jesus convicted him of his sin. And he truly repented of his sin. Remember back to Luke chapter 3 when John was talking to the crowds. He said, whoever has one, whoever has two coats, let him give to the one that doesn't have a coat. And if you have food, you should do the same thing. So there's the principle of sharing and generosity. Uh, the rich man in Luke 12 had more than he could put in his barns. And Zacchaeus had that same kind of surplus. He had much more than he needed. So he gave half of his possessions to the poor. And repented of his dishonesty by paying people back that he had cheated. 
и покаялся в том, что вел себя нечестно, от воздав людям в четверо тем, кого обманул. So Zacchaeus' repentance teaches us a lot about how God wants us to handle wealth. И покаяние Закхия учит нас многому о том, как Бог хочет, чтобы мы обращались с богатством. Now we have some people at our congregation у нас есть люди в общине, that give far more than 10%. Которые дают больше, намного больше, чем десятину. Even people that are not that wealthy даже те люди, которые являются не настолько богатыми. Но у нас есть некоторые богатые люди, богатые люди, которые дают намного меньше, чем 10%. And we have some poor who give far less than 10%. А также есть бедные люди, которые дают намного меньше, чем 10%. So we have generous poor people and generous wealthy people. Так что у нас есть щедрые Бедные люди и щедрые богатые люди. And we have greedy poor people and greedy wealthy people. И у нас есть жадные бедные люди и жадные богатые люди. The problem is not the wealth, it's the hearts of the people. И проблема не в деньгах, а в сердцах людей. Both rich and poor. И богатых и бедных. If this congregation actually gave 10% of its income, если бы эта община давала действительно 10% своего дохода, I mean я имею в виду все члены общины, It would be scary what we could do. то страшно даже подумать о том, что мы смогли бы сделать. И это является истиной по поводу всех общин. Независимо от того, где они находятся. So it would be good for us to look at the principles in Luke's gospel, like the story of Zacchaeus. Поэтому нам нужно смотреть на вот эти принципы, которые раскрываются в Евангелии от Луки, в особенности, как эта история о Зачее. But it makes people nervous for for me to preach on these things. Но некоторые люди начинают нервничать, когда я проповедую об этом. I preach on them anyway. But it makes people nervous. I don't know if it makes people nervous in the Ukraine or not. But I have an idea that it probably does. Because the Word of God has a way of getting right to our heart. Look at Luke 21 before we have to close here. This little story of the widow's offering is only in Luke's Gospel. Вот эта история о пожертвовании бедной вдовы, она встречается только в Евангелии от Луки. Jesus says in verse 1 that he saw the rich people putting their gifts into the temple treasury. Иисус говорит в первом стихе, что он увидел богатых, клавших дары свои сокровищницы. Then he saw this poor widow put two tiny coins, two, two copper coins in the treasury. Затем он увидел бедную вдову, которая положила туда две маленькие медные монетки. These two tiny little Greek are called lepta. И вот эти две маленькие греческие медные монетки, они назывались лепта. This is like your smallest, uh, smallest uh, uh, coin of value. Это как самая, самая такая дешевая uh, монета, то есть uh, имеющая самую низкую ценность. Now, the gifts of the rich were much larger. Конечно же, пожертвования богатых, они были намного больше. But this woman gave everything she had. Но вот эта бедная женщина, она положила все, что имела. Uh, she didn't give 10%. Она не положила туда 10%. Or 20 or 30 percent. Или 20, или 30. She gave it all. Она все отдала. 
It was the last that she had. She figured she would just trust God to keep his promise and take care of her. Because she had no ability left to take care of herself. Now, when we give the way we should, we are trusting God. We should ask ourselves the question, is there any faith involved in my giving? By giving in this manner, am I putting my trust in God to a greater degree than I would if I gave in a different manner? Если я даю таким образом, то uh, доверяю ли я Богу больше, чем если бы я давал каким-то другим образом? Am I trusting God to open the windows of heaven and bless me more than I'm able to handle? Доверяю ли я Богу, чтобы Он открыл окна небесные для того, чтобы благословить меня благословением, которое я не знаю, смогу ли с ним справиться? You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, do, do you guys have things in the Ukraine like insurance policies and things like that? Uh, yes. Okay, so you can buy life insurance and things like that? Yes. Oh, interesting. And you can, the, you have like savings accounts you can have in the bank and stuff like that? Yes. Okay. So if we see if we're putting all our trust in our insurance and on our savings account. Так что если мы надеемся на э, страховку, которую мы купили, или на наш депозит в банке, and we might say if I give this much, I might not have enough to do something else later in the month that I want to do. Или, э, например, мы говорим, что ну вот если я дам вот столько-то, и потом позже э, я, ну как бы, я что-то на, на этом месяце еще должен сделать, то у меня не хватит денег. And I better store up a little bit more or I might not have enough to do something else. And I would, I would give more, but I don't want to, um, to um, you know, be um, without the money I need. But when we start to give where it hurts a little bit, then we're really trusting God. Let's, let's, let's think of this in a different way for a moment. If I didn't give what I am now giving to God, what could I buy with that money? Could I make a payment on a car? Could I make a payment on a house? Could I buy anything of, of size with the money that I would have if I didn't give to God? Am I spending more on entertainment than I am on God? Uh, 
Am I spending more on transportation than I do on God? Am I spending more on clothing than I do on God? When we when we make these kinds of comparisons, it helps us put things in perspective. Если мы делаем вот такие вот сравнения, то э, это помогает нам э, увидеть перспективу. When these rich people cast into the treasury, it didn't really cost them anything. Когда вот эти богатые люди э, клали деньги в сокровищницу, это им ничего не стоило. It didn't change their standard of living to, to give that money. Их уровень жизни не изменился тем, что они вот отдали эту сумму. They didn't have to give up anything to give that money. Им не пришлось ничем пожертвовать для того, чтобы отдать эти деньги. Um, so what do we have to give up in order to give what we give? Так что, чем нам придется пожертвовать для того, чтобы дать э, э, столько, сколько мы можем дать? Again, the, the teachings in the Gospel of Luke are not teachings against wealth. И опять-таки, учение в Евангелии от Луки учит нас не против богатств. They are teachings against selfishness and dishonesty. Они учат о том, что нечестность или эгоизм, это неправильно. And teachings against serving money as a master instead of serving God as a master. Учат о том, что неправильно служить деньгам вместо того, чтобы служить Богу. It is good for me from time to time to read these things and examine my own heart. И ну, полезно время от времени читать вот эти отрывки и исследовать свое сердце. And I hope uh, today's class has been spiritually challenging to you as well. И я надеюсь, что сегодняшнее занятие было для вас также духовным вызовом. Можно сказать, да? Go ahead. Uh, большое спасибо за прошлый uh разговор, линия и э, я, я еще раз перечитал и вот в свете того, что я забрал, я э, признаю, что я был не прав. Okay, uh, the student wants to thank you for uh, uh, the last class where you had discussion about the Pliny, uh, the uh, Pliny the Trojan and uh, um, he, uh, he has uh, Uh, he came back to the textbook and reread the passage, and he realized that uh, you were correct, and uh, he probably misunderstood it. Oh, well, that's very, that's very good. Thank you. Okay, God bless you all, my brothers and sisters, and I will see you, Lord willing, next week. <laughs>